Bismillah Rahman Rahim. This is 5090 level biology. We are doing now the November 2000 paper 1, 2 and this is the question 25 to 40 which we have done the question 1 to 25 in a previous video. Now starting with question number 25, which of these structures would be the first to receive nicotine absorbed into the blood from tobacco smoke? Or well, you know people who smoke tobacco, I mean they inhale it, it doesn't go into your stomach. So it would enter first of all the lungs and in the lungs it would enter the blood and you know the vessel which comes out is the pulmonary vein and this pulmonary vein goes to the left atrium. So the answer to this was left atrium. So if you did not know the circulatory system, this was a difficult question. I could change this MCQ and I could make you an MCQ in which I could say uh, which of this blood vessel would receive nicotine absorbed into the blood from tobacco smoke. I would just change it a little bit and the answer to that would be pulmonary vein because the lungs would be carrying the blood in the pulmonary vein to the left atrium. So it says which of these structures would be the first to receive the nicotine absorbed into the blood from tobacco smoke. So the lungs is the place where it's absorbed. So from the lungs the blood goes into the pulmonary vein which carries it to the left atrium. If you didn't understand that I'm sorry you won't be able to do this question. Question number 26. Some characteristics of microorganisms are listed can be killed by antibiotics, can cell wall made of chitin, that would be a fungus, genetic material is DNA or RNA, that would be virus, have hyphae, that would be fungus, make spores, fungus, may have flagella, bacteria, have a protein, coat, virus, these enzymes to digest food, bacteria, fungi, reproduce inside a host cell, virus. So if you knew all that, only then you could do these questions. Which row matches the features of bacteria, fungi and viruses? So bacteria was 1 and 6. Why was it 1 and 6? Bacteria can be killed by antibiotics. So this was it. And 6 was may have flagella. Yes, bacteria, some bacteria may have flagella. Then fungus was 4 and 5. Why was fungus 4 and 5? Have hyphae and have make spores. So that was 4 and 5. Then why was viruses 7 and 9, they have a protein coat and 9, they reproduce inside a host cell. So 7 and 9 was the correct answer to that and that was how you would be able to fix this question which was on microorganisms. Okay, next question. Seven. Two containers X and Y were filled with equal amounts of dough mixture for making bread. The mixture Y had yeast in it, so this one has yeast in it and this one has no yeast in it. So no yeast in this, they were left in a warm place for two hours, the diagram shows their appearance. After this time you see the dough mixture has not risen, the dough mixture has risen and is nearly filling up the whole beaker and is really, you know, sort of coming out of it. Which substance produced by the yeast caused the difference between containers X and Y? Of course, it is the carbon dioxide which is bubbling through the dough and making it rise. Can't be alcohol, can't be lactic acid, can't be oxygen because yeast respires and is going to be producing carbon dioxide and alcohol but the alcohol is not going to make the dough rise so it's only going to be the carbon dioxide. Then coming on to question number 28, which statement describes relationships in ecosystems? Which statement describes relationships in ecosystems? question as seen in the marks as in seen in the exam report it also says it was a difficult question so it uh, carbohydrates are passed from decomposers to producers and uh, no not carbohydrates they are respired energy is passed from carnivore to herbivore this is the wrong in the food chain primary to producer notes the other way around first there are producers then they are primary consumers, then secondary consumers, and then tertiary consumers, and then quaternary consumers. So you have to just look at the food chain and see. So the only answer which was correct is water is passed from respiring decomposers to producers. Because decomposers would be the one which would be providing the um, stuff to the producer, which is the plant matter, which is dependent on the nitrates and all from the soil so this is what we had to understand and you had to be clear on that is the food chain nine the diagram shows the food chain we had grass rabbit fox flea now flea was a parasite so there'd be many in number 
So you have to see that this is a pyramid of numbers. So this had to be more because the number of fleas would be much, much more in a fox. There'd be hundreds of them. Like for instance, if you get lice in your hair, well, you have hundreds of them in your hair. So you have to understand is that the fox was the lesser number, rabbits would be more. So then of course you have to understand this would be the flea part and uh, this would be the fox part. So this would be the fox. And then we had rabbit. So this would be the rabbits would be of course a few in number. And then of course we had the grass. So the grass would be of course the number of grass would be quite number of grass plants would be many. It's a pyramid of numbers. So grass would be many, then rabbits would be less than fox and the fleas would be a lot more. So this one would be the one which would be the describing factor. So you have to hear this was wrong. Why was this wrong? Because the grass couldn't have been just one. There are many, many grass plants in a grassland or something. So this was, that's why this was wrong. And this was correct because the grass were very large in number. Uh, the diagram shows a carbon cycle during which stage in the cycle is oxygen excreted by living organisms. Well, this is a very good question. Excreted means and excreted means removal of toxic materials. Oxygen is excreted only in the process of photosynthesis. So it was carbon dioxide in the atmosphere to carbon compounds in plants because that's excess and it's removed from this. It's going to, oxygen is going to move, diffuse out of the leaves. So that was the only answer was A. The rest of it is of course all was uh, wrong. If there oxygen is excreted by living organs, the plants are living organisms. And during photosynthesis, oxygen is diffusing out of the stomata through the leaves. So the answer to that was A. Difficult question, I would say pretty difficult. This is mentioned in the uh, exam report. So I'm going to talk about the exam report. It says in the exam report, it says candidates had to read this question carefully. While the diagram showed the carbon cycle, the question referred to oxygen excretion and many candidates consequently confused plant respiration and photosynthesis. That's exactly what I said. And I'm reading this from the marks uh, from the exam report. Then of course, we have question number 31. Three statements about the malarial parasites are listed. Insecticides are used to kill the vectors. Malarial parasite, you know, is plasmodium and causes malaria. And the people who suffer from it contain the plasmodium in their blood, inside the red blood cells. So insecticides are used to kill the vectors. Netting is used to keep the vectors away from people. Yes, the female Anopheles mosquito should not suck your blood if you're suffering from malaria because then you can transfer to other people. People take drugs that stop the malarial pathogen developing. So all the three of these were correct and one, two, and three. So statements about malarial parasites. So these are the ones which were a challenging question. I don't think it was very easy unless you knew the whole uh, story of malaria and how it is spread from one person to another. 32, the diagram shows some ways in which human activities affect the environment. Which activity is most likely to lead to acid rain? And the reason is we're going to talk about burning fossil fuels. Why? Because all this will result in oxides of nitrogen and sulfur dioxide, and that's going to dissolve in water, forming nitric acid and sulfuric acid. And that, of course, is going to result in acid rain. The rest of it was all wrong, and I'm sure everybody can figure that out why it was all wrong. There's discharging factory waste pollution, forestry, deforestation, discharging sewage would be eutrophication. So this was, of course. Then coming on to question number 33. Which statements about meiosis are correct? Meiosis produces genetically identical, no, that's wrong. Meiosis produces haploid nuclei, yes, that's correct. So genetically identical, no, because meiosis is a reduction division, reduces the number of chromosomes by half. You only have one of each pair in the gametes which are produced by meiosis. Then which conditions, question 34, which conditions are needed for the germination of most seeds? Very easy to remember. I make a simple mnemonic temperature, water, and oxygen. Light is not needed. So this was correct. No light needed. Only oxygen and water needed. It's temperature, water, and oxygen. Not air. Please remember that. And not moisture. And an adequate temperature, enough water, and oxygen. 
Question 35, the diagram shows the fetus in the uterus. Uh, P, Q, R, you can see P, P, Q is the amniotic fluid. R is the umbilical cord. S is the outer layer, which is the amnion. Or, and P is, of course, the placenta. Which of the label structures are essential for feeding the fetus and which for supporting it and protecting it from mechanical shocks? So protecting it and mechanical shocks would be Q and S. Supporting and protecting. And feeding would be P and R because yes, uh, feeding would be P and R because R is the umbilical cord. And the umbilical cord contains an artery and a vein which is going to bring the, of course, it's the fetal blood, but it's going to bring the oxygen and the glucose. And the umbilical cord contains both the umbilical artery and the umbilical vein. So feeding would be P and R. And the Q and S would be supporting and protection. So this is something you need to revise the chapter on reproduction. And coming on to question number 16, 36. The diagram shows the changes in thickness of the uterus lining during one menstrual cycle. And what would be the levels of progesterone? This is just showing you the thickness of the lining. So the lining is thick, then it is shed, and then of course it starts to repair, and then it remains thick. So this is the thickness of the uterus lining. Please read this very carefully. And so when would the levels of progesterone and LH be the highest? Now the LH has the highest on day 14. You know, LH is sort of here, then peaks, and then it goes down again. That's very typical of LH. So on day 14, and that was very easy to figure out because day 14 is only in one of the answers. So day 14, this was the clue which would have made you decide the answer to this question. Question 37, a gene is a unit of inheritance that controls the production of a protein. Yes, that's what is in the syllabus also. Unit of inheritance which controls the production of a protein. It can't be allele gene the different alleles of a gene and a chromosome is made up of dna and a section of the chromosome is called a gene so we have to be very clear on all these chromosome gene allele then question 38 two brothers had different blood groups one has blood group a and the other has group b okay so one is a and one is b now, what can be concluded about their parents' blood group genotypes? So, you've got to understand if the child is A, he could be IAIA or he could be IAIO. Similarly, the child who is B has to be IBIB or has to be IBIO. They can't be anything else. So, two brothers are different. So, one is group A and one is. So, this one of the child is this and one of the child is this. Now, one parent must be heterozygous. Why is that? Because one parent has to be, one has to have A and one has to have B. Because one child is A and one has to be, so it could be if this, child, this parent is AA and this parent is BB, then all the children would be AB. But then, of course, if this is BO, so you have to understand is what they are asking you. So one parent at least must be heterozygous. Both can be heterozygous. Because you see A has come from one parent and B has come from another parent. So if both were AB, then of course it was possible. Both were AB, then it was possible. Both were at least must be heterozygous. So this is what we had to understand is, and I will explain this question again at the end of uh, at the end of the paper, let me just finish this paper. I'll go to this blood group again. Then coming to question number 39. What is a potential danger of growing genetically engineered crops? What is a potential danger of growing genetically engineered crops? Danger. This would be, of course, this is, this is going to be a good thing. Greater E is good thing. Reducing the amount of pest is good thing. These are all good things. And what would danger would be something bad. So changing the genotype of plants in nearby ecosystems because if the pollen is transferred, that could really be disastrous. 
So that would be one of the dangers of genetic engineering. That's a difficult question as well. And that was not very easy. And I think that would be a challenging question for many students. Okay. Last question, question 40. The table shows the genotypes and phenotypes for hair color for the members of the family, but one phenotype is shown incorrectly. Now, we have to understand this is that if brown people had to have big A, big A, or big A, small A, because it says this was the answer to that, right? And look at the blondes. The blondes had to be small A, small A. So blonde was the recessive characteristic, right? You just had to check which one was wrong. Now you have to understand was sun A was because this is this is you see this they have, we had only one blonde, but all the browns were either this or this. So browns were all correct. Big A, small A. Then this was big A, big A. Then this was big A, big A. Then this was big A, small A. But the blonde, this one was now incorrect because the blondes we said were the recessive. So sun one was the one which was wrong. So that is why which one has an incorrect phenotype. So this was easy to do. I don't think this was a very difficult question. Now we will go back to question number 38. We're looking at question 38 once again. And I'm discussing this again for a reason that you choose a difficult question. It says in the exam report as well. One, two brothers are different. One was blood group A and one was blood group B. So if one child is one group A and one is B, so you've got to understand what are the three possibilities. I've just given that to you. If you have... If the parents are A, B, and O, O, even then they can have an A and a B kid. If the parents are A, O, and B, O, even then they can have. If the parents are A, B, and A, B, then only they, they can also then have a, a child A and a child B. Now in this, now look at all these. This is homozygous. This is hetero. This is heterozygous, 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 heterozygous. So one parent at least must be heterozygous. You have to understand this. This is only possible if the parents, one child is A and one is B. How is it possible? You can see these different combinations that I've just given you at the top in which you have to figure out it. How could a child be, how could a parent, a couple have a child group A and a child group B? Please do look at the exam reports. Please do have a look at questions which you are not clear about and try to understand them. And uh, I'm sure you all have my WhatsApp number and please do contact me on my number or write on my comments in the YouTube channel. And then, of course, I can get back to you. And uh, I hope uh, I wish you all the best. And uh, exams are coming near 26th of July. We have the exam starting. So all the very best. And thank you once again.